living from our heart, living from our core, living from our power, we all get more. We are powerful women. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Heart Whisper Summit. As you know by now, I'm Sue Erda. I'm one of the founders and publishers at Powerful You Publishing, and I'm your host for this event, and I remain so grateful to be able to introduce these amazing women to you who are the authors of the upcoming book, Heart Whispers, that launches on June 22nd. And today, I'm excited to talk with Dr. Sharon Montez. I've known Sharon for a few years now because she has also shared different stories in a couple of our other anthology books, and she is just an amazing woman. I love talking with her because her energy is is really kind of, it's, it's cool and feels so good to be in it. So I know you'll love to, that experience. I'm going to read Sharon's bio to introduce her, and then we will start talking with her. Dr. Sharon Montez is an internationally recognized pioneer in the field of integrative health and holistic medicine. For three decades, she has served as medical director for prestigious healthcare facilities, such as the University of Maryland Center for Integrative Medicine, University of Colorado Rose and AF Williams Family Medicine Centers, and North Texas Area Arlington Community Health Center. Her commitment is to help spiritually oriented community leaders serve with greater health, joy, and freedom. Her passion and purpose are focused on offering living well positive intelligence coaching programs to help people upgrade their personal operating system to live with health, happiness, and efficiency. And Sharon, I'm happy to welcome you. How are you? I am well, Sue. Thank you for that welcome and thank the listeners that will be joining us uh, now and in the future. Yes, I am so happy to have them listening because there's so much wonderful energy around this whole topic of heart whispers and what it means. I like your topic that you chose today, magnify heart whispers and quiet mind chatter, unite the wisdom of science and soul. There is a lot there. Let's unpack a little bit of it at a time. What do you mean by uniting the wisdom of science and soul? And how do you keep people connected and living in the wisdom of their heart. I know you help people do that. Yeah, I think it goes back to my ancestors. My mom's an artist, my dad's a scientist. And so wisdom is both measurable and non-measurable. And sensing in, thinking in, when we unite them, then you have synergy. And helping someone restore balance which is a requirement for healing, requires both. So synergy happens when you unite these wisdoms and it makes it easier for people to live with health, freedom, and joy. So, so Sharon, that's great. I, I love what you say about connecting the wisdom and the science and the soul and the spirit. That's so cool. I know you have been a healer and in these healing arts in the spiritual realm for many, many, many years. And I know that you have worked with lots of people and you have healing tips that you know work. Will you share with us the top five healing tips that you, that we would we can use? I would love to. And to clarify, my dad jokes when I leave the house, have you healed anyone? And I'm really clear that I'm a helper, that people heal from the inside. And it is right relationship with themselves with source, God, whatever their name for the source of healing is, others, and with nature and natural law. So self-healing is a big self, the self in relationship to all. And our fingers are our original digital operating system. So what I do is ask people to remember this and anchor particular healing practices that they can do anywhere at any time. And when done consistently, these things create an amazing foundation for self-healing. So to review, we start with breath. We then do naming. We then do senses, being in the body, using our senses in this here now, nature, Connecting with the rhythms, the visions, nature is an organizing healing system. And personal inspiration, your little pinky, what is it that inspires you? So we start with 
breath is the most valuable tool. Doesn't cost us anything. And it's this amazing bridge between conscious and unconscious. When I choose to breathe, I am choosing to influence the energy and the chemistry of my body. So my favorite, favorite breath is called the baby breath. And we are wired to have this calming response in our nervous system. If you've ever seen a baby cry, they cry, and then they, they do two little inspires, and then there's an exhale. So the baby breath is you inhale to the top of your lungs, one more little, and then a gentle, slow exhale through the mouth. We have places in our nervous system that when we breathe this way, we will calm down, we'll get into the healing part of the vagus nerve. So the baby breath, one. Two, labeling, naming. When I am able to get into my observer part and name the sensations, the emotions, thoughts, I'm already in a nervous place that is about wisdom. So we're really talking about heart wisdom. The deal is this integration of, oh, I am experiencing. Spanish has a lovely I am that's not permanent. So I am feeling anger. I'm not, or I feel anger, but not I am. I feel cold. I feel. So labeling the emotions and the sensations gets you an ability to redirect. Senses, the idea of focusing on one exquisite thing, our fingertips, really focusing on, ooh, slowly, wiggling our toes, gets us in the body and out of the mental chatter. The heart wisdom is experienced through the senses of the body. For me, one of my favorites is drinking a cup of tea. This engages it's all my senses. I can look at it, I can smell it, I can taste it. I can be with the birds, I can feel the warmth. Senses gets us in the now. And the now is where we've got the energy and the expansion to heal nature. So whether it is crystals in your office, shells, a vision outside, walking in the grass, uh, a painting. They found that paintings of nature lower heart rate and blood pressure. Make sure that you connect with little bits of nature, big bits of nature, wherever you are, nature is showing up and is present, the force of life. And then inspiration. This is movement. Are you an athlete? Is moving with others your joy zone? Art, music, stories of people who are courageous. When we connect with others who are doing amazing things, then we are in that field of connection with all. So being inspired either by to create or enjoy what others have created. So those are the five fingertips for resilience and for self-healing. Thank you. Hmm. I love that. And that makes it simple too. I, I, wonderful. And, you know, so one of the things that you're talking about this, today, magnify heart whispers and quiet mind chatter. Like I know that my mind just goes, goes, goes. The monkey mind is there constantly. I've got lots of stuff to do, all of those things. And I know that I'm not alone in this. So you teach breath work as a way to quiet this mind chatter and to be able to tap that heart. Teach us about that. Tell us more about that. Yeah, our heart has a bigger electro field, electric and magnetic field than our brain. And there's more signals going from our heart to our brain than from this brain to this brain. And so it's silly to tell someone calm down when the monkey mind is chattering. So through the breath, that prolonged exhale, through choosing to focus on breath, we are allowing our nervous system to come into balance. So starting with alignment of breath, then whether you then align your body, I'm gonna slow down my body, or whether you aligned your mind, I'm gonna give it something else to chatter on. The idea is you come into alignment 
and that then allows for greater choice. So I love that. And so that the baby breath that you talked about, the two inhales in that, is that like what's is that the easiest way to quiet the mind? It is. So I started teaching single moms breathing techniques 30 years ago because I believe that integrative medicine should be accessible, not just something that people who have a lot of money have access to. God gave us natural medicine, our breath. So what are the tools that we've got available? And I used to teach people counting. I, there's still value in all of these. It's just, we are we don't have to think about it. So if you want to count three baby breaths, if you want to do your fingers while you're doing your baby breaths, a lot of the people in my coaching program like the combination of breath and something sensory. So, yeah. Nice. I there's love that. all kinds of breathing that have come through wisdom traditions and depending on what we want, but baby breath. Easy. Baby breath. Okay, great. Baby we'll start breath. there. <laughs> Good. And baby steps for the baby breath. So, you know, Sharon, your story in the book that you shared is titled Nurturing Synergy Through the Union of Spirit and Science. Why did you share that story? What is it that you're hoping to share with our readers? I guess my life path has been one of integrating that quantitative and qualitative way of being a human. And so young, there was the right brain, left brain, which actually create a whole brain. I've, when I did my training at a regional trauma center, I was finishing that immersion into what Western medicine does well. It keeps the physical body alive. It's very oriented towards the material. And I stepped into the world of Eastern medicine, chi, meridians, channels, and flow. And I got an image of you've got a human who's out of balance. Whether you help using the material or whether you help using the energetic, both of them create a whole system for supporting people return to balance. And so when I see people, I'm always asking, is the majority of this material, is it mental, emotional, or is it energetic? And using physics, light, and sound, as well as people's alignment and connection with the source of healing, whether that's God, whether it's source, whatever they call that, it there's a source that is always available as long as we align, connect, and center. And so having processes that help us remember to do that is the foundation for healing. And mm -hmm. having a team was like, okay, everyone is part of supporting that person's journey. So, yeah, beautiful. And so, you know, there are a lot of people um, listening who are, um, I'll say they're, they're either just getting into me Eastern medicine, Western medicine, I mean, yeah. the Eastern medicine compared to the Western medicine. Do you find um, that they're both necessary and that do you feel that what about people who are just like, nope, I got to go and listen to my doctors, listen to my physicians, all of this stuff. What about Eastern medicine? How can it fit in with that? Yeah. And I remember when I started studying and working to understand how that system worked, having immersed myself in thousands of hours with the other system. So one integration of East and West is if you look at these Eastern systems, those meridians, those channels are over fascial planes. They, they integrate with our Western anatomy. And once you start understanding the physics and science of fascia, it's like, of course, this is conducting. And I remember when I taught acupuncture, there was an image of putting a tracer needle in an acupuncture point the tracer went up in a line. If you put that same needle in a non-acupuncture point, it diffuses. So as Westerners, we kind of like to have things that we can touch, things that we can measure. Whereas the Eastern is more about the inner sensing and recognizing that there's other ways of knowing and other ways of wisdom and that's why I love this book, Heart Whispers. The heart doesn't nag. 
It's not shrill. It, there's guidance and we have to calm down both our mind, our nervous system enough so that we can live through the guidance of those whispers. And yes, there are people who are very, that Western is working. They're, they're fine with a material approach. They're fine with pharmaceuticals and chemicals. I just have cared for the highly sensitives who had adverse reactions mentally, emotionally to, to pharmaceuticals. So I had to explore other systems and other ways to support their healings. So there's a whole spectrum of material and frequency. And to me, I have had to learn to integrate the Eastern and the Western to be of service to the people who come to me for care. So. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. And they fit beautifully together. Uh, so thank you. I that. think so. You know, yeah, it's right. It goes, builds on right, right brain, left brain, West religion, medical. It's all part of differing ways of experiencing the one. So. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sharon, I know you have the Living Well Positive Intelligence Program, which I love that name. Can you tell us about that? So this is an amazing coaching program that helps people upgrade their personal operating system based on foundations of wisdom and with some technology it's a super fast efficient way for helping people rewire the mammal body at the nervous system and because it's a foundational operating system people notice improvement in performance wellness and relationships and it, it's really fun and i'm uh, blessed to be able to offer this Wonderful. And, and so that's on your website? Yeah. And uh, if people, there's a, there's a, they can go to the website, living well, whole health forward slash PQ. And there's a free gift that helps ground this five digit. We call it resilience. To me, whether we call it self-healing or resilience, the capacity to upgrade our ability to respond and you know, go in the future and recover. So there's a free gift and there's a little bit more and they can ask for more information about the coaching program, but livingwellwholehealth.com forward slash PQ. PQ, what does PQ stand for, Sharon? Positive intelligence. Ah, beautiful. I knew there had to be something. <laughs> well, if we think there's IQ that came out measuring all of the quantitative stuff. Then there is emotional intelligence, your EQ. How emotionally intelligent are you? This is just positive intelligence that it's the evolution. It unites all of them. Beautiful. I love it. Well, Sharon, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to work with you, to talk with you. You have so much great wisdom to share, and I appreciate you so much being a part of this whole collaboration. Thank you. And thank you, Sue, for all the work that you've put it in to gathering <clears throat> the authors and the um, all the required materials for making this happen. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. It's our pleasure and honor to do this. And listeners, thank you for being here. Thank you for giving yourself this gift of all these amazing women and this incredible information that they share. Take it to heart. Bring it in. If you take one simple thing from each of these authors, you're going to have this whole treasure chest full of amazing gifts to help you listen more closely to your heart. So do that. And buy this book, Heart Whispers on Launch Day, June 22nd. And if you go to our website, heartwhispersbook.com, um, you will be able to get guided to your Amazon link for whatever country you are in. And then you will see that we have a 99 cent Kindle launch for that day. So for 99 cents, you get this beautiful Kindle book. Also, you bring that your Amazon receipt number back to our website and you will be able to get more than 40 free gifts from our authors and partners. And these are free to you. They are discovery calls. They are meditations. They are downloads. They are eBooks They're free reports, all kinds of wonderful stuff for you. So be sure to do that. And again, thank you for being here. Please continue to listen to your heart. The world needs you and what your whispers of your heart are saying. Thank you. Bye, everybody.